Dr. Christian's office. The Vaseline Program, presenting a new Dr. Christian prize play called Always a Woman by Peggy Mann of New York City, starring Jean Hirschhold as Dr. Christian with Helen Clare in the role of Judy Price. These are the days for swimming, for tennis and golf, for getting yourself a healthy tan. But ladies, remember, these are also the days for getting yourself a head of dried-out, lackluster hair. Too much sun, drying wind and water all tend to give you dry scalp by stealing away the natural scalp oils. Result? Your hair is lifeless, hard to manage, unattractive. But you can check dry scalp easily and quickly, keep your hair flatteringly soft, lovely, with Vaseline hair tonic. Adopt this simple summertime beauty treatment. Before every shampoo, give your scalp a brisk, vigorous massage with Vaseline hair tonic. Then wrap a steaming hot towel around your head and let the heat penetrate for several minutes. After the shampoo, smooth on a few drops of Vaseline hair tonic as you would a brilliant team. This gives added protection against the sun's rays. The very first time you use Vaseline hair tonic, you'll get results. Your hair will be glamorous soft and lustrous the way you like it. Get a bottle of Vaseline hair tonic tonight. And now to our prize play, and our scene opens in the River's End Railroad Station, where Dr. Christian, just returned from an out-of-town call, is waiting for Judy Price to pick him up in the car. Sitting next to him on the bench is a pretty young lieutenant of the Women's Army Corps. Dr. Christian looks at her hard for a moment and then says, Uh, pardon me, lieutenant, but do you happen to know a man named Mike Taylor? Why, yes. Oh, then you are Eileen Barrett. I confess, but... Uh, I thought I'd recognize you from your pictures. Mike's told me so much about you. Uh, I'm Dr. Christian. Dr. Paul Christian. Oh, of course I should have known. Mike's told me a lot about you, too, Dr. Christian. Well, then maybe we can consider ourselves officially introduced. <laughs> How long will you be here, Lieutenant? I have a 21-day leave. And then? Back to Paris. I'm with the Army of Occupation. Oh, I see. Well, I think Mike's going to be a very lucky boy for the next 21 days. <laughs> Thank you. I only hope Mike thinks so, too. Dr. Christian? Oh, there's Judy, my secretary. Hello, Doctor. I'm sorry I'm late. Oh, that's all right. Judy, I'd like you to know uh, Lieutenant Eileen Barrett, Mike Taylor's girl, uh, Judy Price. Oh, so you're Mike Taylor's girl. I'm very glad to meet you. Mike Taylor's girl. That sounds so nice. I'm glad to meet you too, Miss Price. Where is Mike? Oh, he wired me on the train. They got a special order at the plant. He won't be able to get off for a couple of hours yet. Are you going to wait in the station? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, no, you're not. You're coming right home with me. Uh, That is, if you'd like to. Don't you want to freshen up a bit? That's awfully kind of you, Miss Price. Judy to you. (laughs) Judy. You're sure it wouldn't put you out? Oh, it would be a pleasure. And I'll be going on calls with Dr. Christian so you can have the apartment all to yourself. I expect it'll be an easier place to meet, Mike, than a railroad station waiting room. Oh, yes. (laughs) Meetings are hard enough without having half the world stand by as witness. Well, it's all settled then. Come on, you can phone Mike from home. Take the ladies' bags, Doctor. Let's go. All right. Darling, stop staring and come on inside. Mike. Well, aren't you going to say anything? Hello, Lieutenant. Lieutenant? That's a pretty snappy uniform. I'm glad you like it, Mike. Well, aren't you going to... On the cheek? Well, I... I don't know just how to go about kissing an officer. Don't you know how to go about kissing your girl, Mike? I am your girl, aren't I? Sure. Sometimes in some of your letters lately, Did I... you have a nice trip? Uh-huh. Mike, what's the matter? Well, would you like some lemonade? Judy said there was some in the icebox. Oh, sure. Sure, that'd be fine. That'd be just fine. More 
lemonade, Lieutenant? It's all gone. Well, you mean to tell me we finished off that whole big picture? Oh, Mike. Mike, let's stop this stiff putting on. What's the matter? Well, you can tell me. I can take it. What's the matter? Matter? What's the matter between us? Well, nothing. Nothing's the matter. Oh, say, look, I, I've got a table reserved at Marconi's for 7 o'clock. It, it's almost that now. We'd better step on it. You did want to go to Marconi's, didn't you? Y- yes, I did. Well, grab your hat then, Lieutenant, and let's go. We're almost to Marconi's, Mike. And you haven't said one word all the way. Oh, I- I'm sorry, I... I'm just so absorbed in watching all these guys salute you. Here comes another one. Evening, Lieutenant. Good evening, Sergeant. Oh, pretty snappy salute. Oh, no, no, no. You better not take my arm, Eileen. What? No, you'd only have to salute again in a minute. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. I don't like it any better than you do. Who says I don't like it? I think it's fine. Makes me very proud to be walking with a lieutenant. Here we are, Mike. Marconi. Yeah. Same old place, huh? Mike, wait. Before we go in... I've thought about this so much the way it would be. Let's have it the way I've dreamed about it. Well, how's that? I didn't think I'd have to give stage directions, but... Well, you'd squeeze my hand and look down at me and wink and say, Hello, Rascal. Remember how you used to do it? Of course. Like that, Mike. Hello, I can't, Eileen. Not now. Let's go in. Oh, look. There's our table, Mike, over in the corner. Ah, Lieutenant. Hello, Luigi. Back from the war. I'm a lieutenant. The last time I see you, you was private first class. (laughs) It's good to see you back, Miss uh, Lieutenant Barrett. Oh, it's wonderful to be back, Luigi. Uh, Right here, Lieutenant. Your old table, special reserve. Thank you, Luigi. Uh, Lieutenant, you don't mind, I ask you uh, You didn't happen to meet my son, Willie, in Paris Mr. Taylor told me you were stationed there Oh, yes What outfit was Willie with, Luigi? Fort Infantry Oh, the famous fort Well, I'm afraid he got to Paris a little before I did The fort helped take Paris Yes, I know, my Willie, he helped take Paris But he got wounded then They sent him back to the 108 General Hospital near Paris You been there, Lieutenant? Oh, yes, yes, I've been there often I, I, I didn't see Willie, though. I'm sorry. Oh. Now I get your orders. Mr. Taylor is calling me up today in order to head. Very special. Hello, Mr. Taylor. Hello, Luigi. I get your orders now. Macaronis are Marconis, like you used to say, huh? <laughs> I get your orders. What's the matter, Mike? Nothing's the matter. You look so... <laughs> It was sweet of you to think of ordering a head. Our special. Yeah. Oh, it's like bringing me back to yesterday. Oh, I'm so glad we came here. You are? Well, yes, aren't you? You're not, Mike. No, I'm not. It's not yesterday. If it isn't, it's only because you won't let it be. Oh, what is it, Mike? Tell me what it is. What's the matter between us? Nothing. This isn't us, Mike. The two of us... Don't add up to what we made before to get... Mike. Well? I've got to ask this. It's been sticking in my throat since I saw you. It's been sticking in my mind long before that. Mike is... What? Mike, are you in love with another girl? You want it straight? Yes. Well, I guess that's it. I am in love with another girl. And she's not a lieutenant with gold bars and a snappy salute. She's... Eileen, where are you going? Eileen, wait! Eileen! All right. That's the way you want it. Go ahead. Here we come. 
What? Why, Lieutenant, what are you doing with those suitcases? There's a 940 train out of here. I'm taking it. Where to? Home to Charlottesville. You... Oh, you've been crying. Where's Mike, Eileen? Please don't talk about Mike, Dr. Christian. Uh, I was afraid something like this might happen. Were you? You see, Eileen, Mike has told me a lot about you. He tried very hard to hide it, but I could sense how he felt. Oh, don't, Dr. Christian. I know he told me. I don't think he did, my dear. I don't think he realizes it himself. Realizes what? Well, that he feels very inadequate next to you. Inadequate? Yes, and it's not hard to understand. You see, your case is the reverse of most. He's the civilian and you're the soldier. But I tried so hard to make things the way they used to be. He wouldn't let me. He kept calling me lieutenant and it was like a slap in the face every time. Yes, I thought he might react like that. You see, Eileen, it was probably his way of retreating. What do you mean, retreating? Well, by pretending to himself that, well, that since you've been in the army, you have become, well, that you weren't a woman anymore and... By making you seem at fault in his own mind, he wasn't forced to face the fact you felt inadequate. But... Next to you. Oh, oh it's, a, it's a natural way for him to react at the beginning, Eileen. And uh, it'll just take time to work things out. Time for him to learn that you really are proud of him and the job he's doing. So that then he can be proud of himself. No, Dr. Christian. It's a nice theory, but I'm afraid that's not it at all. Mike told me something he evidently didn't tell you. And it means everything's over between us. And this isn't just a line remembered out of a book, Dr. Christian. I mean it with everything in me. I never want to see Mike Taylor again as long as I live. Phew. I really never thought, Judy, that we'd persuade her to... not to take the the 940 train out of here. She never would have stayed at all Uh, if you hadn't told her you were sending a messenger to Charlottesville tonight to pick up some medical supplies. By the way, Doctor, just who is your messenger who is going to drive her up? Mike, I hope. Oh. I'm going around to talk to him now. (laughs) Meanwhile, I, I want you to go and get my car and bring it back here so Mike can drive her to Charlottesville. And, uh, Judy. Yes? After I see Mike, I'll have to perform an operation. Oh, but... Oh, Dr. it's nothing serious. Just a minor operation. Oh, all right. I'll pack your little black bag. Now, what will you need, Doctor? Scalpel and... Yes, a uh, scalpel, a uh, half a yard of rubber hose, and a uh, screwdriver. What? Oh, do as I ask now. And uh, try to be back here within an hour. In the meantime, I'll have a talk with young Mike Taylor. can't understand what it's like, Dr. Christian. We go into a restaurant and she starts talking divisions and troop movements with a waiter. We walk down the street and she's busy saluting every other guy we meet. I know, Mike. It's hot. Yes, but that's the least of it. You should see the look those guys give me. Guys with battle stars on their chest. Battle scars on their body. You should see... It. Yet, where would those men be, Mike? If you and others like you weren't back here turning out their equipment. It's one war, Mike. A lot of fighting men don't realize that. And it's... No man's fault that he is where he is. It's just the way the cards fell. Uh, I guess I pulled the joker, all right. No, Mike, you're doing a fine and essential job in the factory. And Eileen is very proud of you. Proud? (laughs) Don't give me that. I don't even know why she bothered to come back to River's End. Because she loves you, Mike. Because she needs you. Loves me? Needs me? She doesn't need anyone. Since she got into that uniform... Oh, she's not a woman anymore. I think you're wrong, Mike. Once a woman, always a woman. Look, Dr. Christian, I I said I'd drive Eileen to Charlottesville, only so you wouldn't have to drive her. I know you've tried to help, so I'll do that for you. But you're wasting your breath talking to me anymore. It's all finished between us. There's nothing you or anyone else can do about it. What's the matter with the motor? I don't know. What happened? Just hold your horses, Lieutenant, and I'll find out. Hey, hand me that flashlight over there. I'll see what I can see. Oh, 
Well? Did Dr. Christian say anything to you about our spending some time alone together to work things out? Yes. He said that to me, too. Well? Well, it appears as though he meant it. He's gone and siphoned the gas out of the tank. What? It only had been about a half a gallon in there. But the, the, the meter reads full. Yeah, I know. He clipped the main wire to the gas tank. That makes it read full. You know, I'd check the meter before we left. If this is your good doctor's idea of a joke, I don't think it's very funny. And just what are we supposed to do now? Either sit here and wait until a car comes by so we can ride into the next town and get some gas, or... or start walking. Well, I'm too tired to walk. Okay, Lieutenant. But it may be a long sit. There might not be another car along here for hours. This is a dark and lonely road. Still cold? Yes. I already gave you my jacket. Nothing else I can put around you except my arm. I'm not that cold. Now, look. I promised Dr. Christian I'd take good care of you, and I don't want you coming down with pneumonia. I'm putting my arm around you whether you like it or not. Moonlight's bright tonight, isn't it? I guess so. Looks sort of pretty falling on your hair like that. Does it? Yeah. Looks sort of nice. Well, there don't seem to be very many cars along at this time of night. <sighs> Sleepy? Mm, I guess. Well, why don't you put your head on my shoulder like... Like you used to. Uh, that is, if you want to. Yeah, like that. Comfortable? Mm-hmm. Once in, always in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Something Dr. Christian said. Oh, what does it mean? Well, it means... I guess maybe it means... Well, you still get cold and sleepy, don't you? Mm-hmm. Still human, if that's what you mean. No, I mean... Well, remember when we used to stay out late and I'd drive you home and you'd always manage to get cold and sleepy and snuggly? (laughs) And you'd lean your head against my shoulder the way you are now? I guess maybe the gold bars and the snappy salute don't change any of that. (laughs) I'm afraid not. You know, I was so sure you'd changed in the Army... That the girl I was in love with was no more. Who are you? Mike. In the restaurant. Well, when you said about being in love with that other girl, you didn't mean me. The way I used to be. The way you still are. You mean... Darling, you didn't think there was anybody else. Oh, yes. Oh, Eileen, the way I said it, how could you have misunderstood me? Well, I, I guess maybe I was so afraid there would be another girl. And that's the only reason you left the restaurant? Of course. Well, I thought that... Oh, darling. Oh, come here. Look at me. Hello, rascal. My. You know something? I think I suddenly remember how to kiss my girl. Want me to show you? I've been wanting you to show me all day. Oh, darling. Rascal. My precious, sweet little rascal. Hello. Any calls for me this morning, Judy? Oh, good morning, Dr. Christian. You're in early. No, no calls. Dr. Christian, I've been wondering all night, what kind of an operation did you perform last night? With a scalpel and a screwdriver and a piece of rubber hose. Were you operating on a robot? Oh, uh, there's the phone. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Dr. Christian. This is Lieutenant Eileen Barrett. Alias, Mrs. Michael Taylor. Well? Yes, well, when the car broke down, we waited and waited, but no other car passed. So finally we began to walk and talk. Yes, I know. Well, we <clears throat> finally walked all the way into the next town, and there was a justice of the peace. And I called up my CEO and got permission, and... Well, now I'm Mrs. Michael Taylor. 
I thought you'd like to know. Well, congratulations, my dear. I'm very, very happy. Oh, we are too, Doctor. And we owe it all to you. I wanted to thank you, Dr. Christian. And Mike does, too, for everything. We're going to name our first boy after you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, my dear. Oh, uh, Judy. Yes, Dr. Christian? You were asking about that operation last night. Yes. Well, Judy, it was the only operation I've ever done where I deliberately set out to wreck something. My car. But I think I'd say on the whole that it was one of the most successful operations I've ever performed. And the curtain comes down on another Dr. Christian prize play with our star, Jean Hersholt, waiting to greet you and Judy Price right here to say... There's a special kind of heat that goes with midsummer weather. It's called prickly heat, and all too often, baby suffers from it most. So, Mother, relieve baby's prickly heat just as you relieve baby's touchy, chafed skin with Vaseline Petroleum Jelly. Applied on itchy or irritated places, it makes baby feel comfortable. Safe because it's so gentle and so pure, Vaseline Petroleum Jelly can be used freely and frequently. And you can depend on Vaseline Petroleum Jelly for results. First, it soothes the chafed, irritated, or itchy skin. And second, it forms a protective film that helps keep out infection when the skin is broken. Third, it helps promote healing. Of course, Vaseline Petroleum Jelly is equally good for grown-ups to use. It brings cooling comfort to chafed, itchy, or sunburned skin. Better get a second jar or a convenient tube for your personal use. And when you buy, remember, there are many petroleum jellies on the market, but only one bears the trademark Vaseline. That trademark, owned by the Cheeseboro Manufacturing Company, is your guarantee of absolute purity. And now, here is Jean Herschel. <laughs> Thank you very much. I have here a message from the government saying that summer and fall classes for cadet nurses are enrolling now. If you are between the ages of 17 and 35 with a high school education and good health and want to join one of the finest professions in the world, this is your chance. Scholarships provide expenses, spending money, and smart outdoor uniforms. Now, next week, we'll be back in Hollywood with the Dr. Christian program, and the play will be Joyous Heart by Joe Bates Smith. We invite you to listen next Wednesday evening to the Vaseline program, same time and same station. And until then, I'll say good night. Have fun in the sun, but take care of your hair. Summer sun, drying wind, water, all rob you of vital scalp oils, the increased danger of dry scalp. So supplement natural scalp oils with Vaseline hair tonic. Apply just five drops of Vaseline hair tonic daily. Check dry scalp. Keep your hair well-groomed all summer long. Remember, Vaseline hair tonic. Be sure to listen to next week's Dr. Christian prize play, Joyous Heart. You'll love it. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.